At this time, what I would like to do is to introduce to you someone who really needs no introduction, our state represent representative, Aaron Vega. He's a local hero. Rep Vega was born in South Holyoke in 2009. He was elected one of Holyoke's first Latino at-large counselors, and in 2012, he was elected to serve as the state representative for the 5th Hamden District. In his first term, he served on the Joint Committees for Higher Education and Economic Development. He was the only freshman representative appointed to a special committee to address the student debt crisis in the Commonwealth. Thank you. In his second term as state representative, Vega continues to serve on the Joint Committee for Economic Development and is now the vice chair of the Committee on Children and Families and Persons with Disabilities, where he is a strong advocate for families and is working on collaborative approaches to address the issues within the Department of Children and Families. Please join me in welcoming Representative Aaron Vega. Good morning. We live in a very interesting time. And I won't even go into the politics of it all. But we live in a time of miracles happening in medicine every day. Huge breakthroughs. Infant babies born premature being saved. People living longer, sometimes healthier and hopefully healthier lives. We live in a time where a new pill can cure hep C. But the issue is it's $1,000 per pill, $84,000 for full treatment. We live in a time right here in Massachusetts, we have some of the best hospitals in the entire world, yet access to health care is still an issue. A time where the idea of health care is more of a political issue than a health policy. A time when life-saving surgeries can bankrupt an individual or an entire family. A time where we're now saying, let's move to a preventative model in healthcare. All of us in this room have insurance on our homes, on our cars, because something might happen. You might get into an accident, you might have a fire, someone might get hurt on your property. Insurance in case something happens. And unfortunately, that's sort of the mentality with health insurance, in case something happens. How many people do we know that's worried about that premium, that's worried about getting health care coverage, not to go see doctors, but in case something happens? The reality is that we're all going to see doctors, hopefully, more than once a year, that we're going to go get our eyes checked, we're going to have a dentist, that we're going to keep up with our body to make sure it continues to move forward. But that's not the mentality that we have. We have this insurance in case something happens. We need to change that paradigm and think about how health insurance is health care and how they're intertwined. And stop letting these insurance companies divide it out. How many people in this room maybe have health insurance but doesn't cover dental or doesn't cover eye exams, somehow separating our oral health from the rest of the body? Just in case you might not be able to eat, the rest of the body is probably going to suffer. If you can't see, what can you do? realizing now that I need glasses again. So we need to work with our insurance companies to create a model that represents the whole person. And you hear that frame a lot, the whole person. So my name is Aaron Vega. I'm the state rep from the city of Hoyoke. Good morning. Nice to see everybody. Hoyoke's in the house. I do want to take a moment and recognize uh, my, my newest colleague, uh, the new elect from uh, the great city of Amherst, uh, Solomon Goldstein Rose is here, newly elected. If any of you uh, have children, uh, or maybe you're already going here to UMass, watch out for those Brown University kids. Somehow something happens, these Brown University kids graduate and become elected politicians. And in Holyoke, uh, we had a mayor uh, five years ago who was elected, recently graduated from, Hoy uh, from Brown, he was 22. Goldstein's 22, I don't know, watch out for Brown University. <laughs> Let's put Massachusetts in context for a moment, okay? 
because I think many of you, given recent happenings, we're really glad we live in Massachusetts. But here's some of the reality. Here in Massachusetts, more than 190,000 people are enrolled in subsidized insurance health plans throughout the state's health connector. The Medicaid program, known as MassHealth, covers 1.9 million people in Massachusetts, including some 300,000 residents who were added recently due to, quote-unquote, Obamacare, or the Affordable Health Care Act. The state receives $9 billion in federal government in fiscal, in fiscal year 2015, $9 billion from the federal government to subsidize our related health care programs here in MassHealth and other connected programs. And in fact, just last week, Governor Baker and his administration signed a new five-year 1115 waiver that would give us $29.2 billion over five years just to help fund and reform MassHealth. Overall, that waiver provides $52 billion over five years for math health programs to expand substance abuse benefits, to address the opioid epidemic, to secure important investments in strengthening the community-based health care system, which you're all probably part of, and for behavioral health services and for long-term supports. $52.4 billion over five years. In my book, that's a lot of money. I've been state rep for four years now, going to my third term. Still the use of billions of dollars and millions of dollars still sort of blows me away. Our current state budget this year alone, $38.5 billion, with over 40% of that directed to health care. So when we talk about trying to invest more money in bringing down the cost of colleges and universities here in Massachusetts, we talk about investing more in infrastructure. We talk about more in investing in reentry programs from our incarceration people. The issue is that over 40% of that budget is already taken up with health care. So where do we have the expanded, where do we have the room to even move the monies into those places that it's important to our districts and important to our communities? So why sit here this morning and hear from a state rep from Hoyoke, uh, who obviously is not a doctor, uh, who has not been working in health care necessarily? Why hear from me as the quote-unquote keynote speaker uh, as you kick off this day on health equity? A couple reasons. One, Hoyoke, I think, in many ways can be seen as ground zero for this conversation on health equity. Why? Because we have one of the last remaining community hospitals in Hoyoke. We have the Hoyoke Soldiers Home. We have one of the best best health centers, the Hoyle Health Center. We also have Providence with our behavioral health and mental health services. We have a number of nonprofits and community-based organizations, many I know are, are in this room today, working on these issues daily. We have piloted the Prevention Wellness Trust Fund program in Hoyoke. We're going to be piloting a mobile integrated health program with the Hoyoke Medical Center and a new ambulance service. Hoyoke is the hotbed for innovation around health care though it might not be seen that way. We're not Cambridge, we're not Boston, but we have a lot going on. And I recently got involved in this a few years back, and I, I warned Solomon a little bit about taking too many of those invitations. Uh, I was invited to a meeting with Risa and my good friend Josh Garcia at Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to come talk about these health care rankings. I was in my first term as, as state rep. And I said, sure, of course. I mean, my friend is Josh. He invites me to a meeting. I go to meetings all the time. Of course I'll go, having no idea what I'm going to get myself into three years later sitting, standing here in front of all of you. I had been a city councilor for two years, worked closely with my mayor, been involved in lots of things, was newly elected state rep. I had never heard about the health care rankings, which is pretty detrimental because Hamden County was dead last in almost every measure, dead last with Hampshire and Franklin and Berkshire's not far behind in many cases. I was introduced to the, to the community health care rankings. I was introduced to the community health assessment, or needs assessment, right, the CHENA, all kinds of new acronyms you learn when you're a state rep. And here I was in Hoyoke, so proud of the work we were doing with our Head Start programs and Valley Opportunity Council around early education with our organizations battling teen pregnancy, sexually transmitted diseases, with our people working on healthy eating and exercise, with our Boys and Girls Club, our YMCA. All these, th all these great things were happening, and yet we were still dead last. So I got involved. And of course, the next year, the rankings came out, 
we were dead last again. So we had that legislative summit. We brought many of my colleagues together, many of the mayors together to talk about how can we as a bigger community, right? We all talk about community, but how can we as Western Mass, as, as Hamden County, work together? And the things that I learned was very interesting in those meetings because a lot of times we talk about the urban centers, Holyoke and Springfield obviously being where all the issues are, right? That's where the homelessness is. That's where all the programs are. That's where the health equities are uh, apparent because people who have and don't have are, are going to the same places, the same hospitals. You have Bay State Medical Center losing millions of dollars on their Medicaid and Medicare patients. But the reality was that those rural communities in and around Springfield and Hoyoke were dealing with the same issues. Access to health care, access to programs, access to early education, teen programs, summer youth jobs, all these other things that are connected to health care that we don't necessarily think about. Transportation issues, economic development issues. So I think that all of us in Western Mass have our eyes open a little bit more now as we head into the new session, as we head into understanding more of what these rankings mean, as we understand more of what our community-based organizations are doing. As a side note, if you work for a community-based organization or a nonprofit and you do not have a relationship with your state rep and your state senator, you need to establish that tomorrow. Okay, that is critical. It's critical for us to know what you do in our communities. It's critical. Hoyoke is obviously also ground zero, ground zero and we talk about that opioid crisis. Right? We have many organizations working on getting people back on track and getting people the help. The sort of what we call the comprehensive plan, right? People can go into detox for 14 days and come out without any supportive services. Chances are they're going to go back to using. Chances are they're going to go back to their old habits. If we don't have a sort of pathway of supportive services to make sure that they can come back into the community and move forward. So our neighbors here in Hampshire County, Amherst, Northampton. Sometimes there's a separation, right? We call it the tofu curtain between Hoyoke and Northampton sometimes. And people like Bill Newman and myself are trying to poke holes in that tofu curtain and say we need to work better together. People like Claire Higgins, the former mayor of Northampton, she's always in Hoyoke now working on various things. So we're here today to talk about and to find best practices, to share, to learn from each other, but to be emboldened. And as I've said in my recent newsletters, given the recent political climate, to double down here in Massachusetts. As was said by the two speakers before me, we've got some work to do, and we are on the defensive. But we're in Massachusetts, and we're not going backwards. We're not going to go back. We're not going to go back to having uninsured people in our communities. We're not going back to be a community that doesn't welcome people from all over this world into our communities. And we're not going to go back to where we don't worry about those who don't have something, who don't have what we all have, right? That's not what we're going back to. So it's important for us to come together, to talk about these issues, to share these best practices, as I said, to gather that data and bring it forward. Come to us in the new legislative session. Keep up with what's going on. Work with us as policymakers to address the issues, to address the funding, because we're in a position where hospitals can't do it alone, and we're in a position where we're asking almost everyone in this room to do more with less, right? Something you've probably been hearing over the last 5, 10, maybe even 15 years that you've been working in the fields that you're working. Can you do a little bit more with a little bit less? Can you do a little bit more with the same level of funding? But that's the reality. But I do think that these conversations and that what we have done in Massachusetts around mental health, around the opioid crisis, around access is moving in the right direction. There's still a lot of work to do, but the only way we're going to be able to do it is do it together, to gather that data, to share our stories, and make sure that we continue to move not just Hamden County, Hampshire County, but the entire Commonwealth forward into a welcoming, healthy community for all. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day.